your subconscious mind and your happiness. William James, father of American psychology, said that the greatest discovery of the 19th century was not in the realm of physical science. The greatest discovery was the power of the subconscious touched by faith. In every human being is that limitless reservoir of power, which can overcome any problem in the world. True and lasting happiness will come into your life the day you get the clear realization that you can overcome any weakness, the day you realize that your subconscious can solve your problems, heal your body, and prosper you beyond your fondest dream. You might have felt very happy when your child was born, when you got married, when you graduated from college, or when you won a great victory or a prize. You might have been very happy when you became engaged to the loveliest girl or the most handsome man. You could go on and list innumerable experiences, which have made you happy. However, no matter how marvelous these experiences are, they do not give real lasting happiness, they are transitory. The book of Proverbs gives the answer, Whosoever trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. When you trust in the Lord, the power and wisdom of your subconscious mind, to lead, guide, govern, and direct all your ways, you will become poised, serene, and relaxed. As you radiate love, peace, and goodwill to all, you are really building a superstructure of happiness for all the days of your life. You must choose happiness. Happiness is a state of mind. There is a phrase in the Bible which says, Choose ye the state whom ye will serve. You have the freedom to. 158. Choose happiness. This may seem extraordinarily simple, and it is. Perhaps this is why people stumble over the way to happiness, they do not see the simplicity of the key to happiness. The great things of life are simple, dynamic, and creative. They produce well-being and happiness. St. Paul reveals to you how you can think your way into a life of dynamic power and happiness in these words. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Phil. 4 to 8. How to choose happiness begin now to choose happiness. This is how you do it, when you open your eyes in the morning, say to yourself, divine order takes charge of my life today and every day. All things work together for good for me today. This is a new and wonderful day for me. There will never be another day like this one. I am divinely guided all day long, and whatever I do will prosper. Divine love surrounds me, enfolds me, and enwraps me, and I go forth in peace. Whenever my attention wanders away from that which is good and constructive, I will immediately bring it back to the contemplation of that which is lovely and of good report. I am a spiritual and mental magnet attracting to myself all things, which bless and prosper me. I am going to be a wonderful success in all my undertakings today. I am definitely going to be happy all day long. Start each day in this manner, then you will be choosing happiness, and you will be a radiant joyous person. He made it a habit to be happy a number of years ago. I stayed for about a week in a farmer's house in Kunimra on the west coast of Ireland. He seemed to be always singing and whistling and was full of humor. 159. I asked him the secret of his happiness, and his reply was, It is a habit of mine to be happy. Every morning when I awaken and every night before I go to sleep, I bless my family, the crops, the cattle, and I thank God for the wonderful harvest. This farmer had made a practice of this for over 40 years. As you know, thoughts repeated regularly and systematically sink into the subconscious mind and become habitual. He discovered that happiness is a habit. You must desire to be happy There is one very important point about being happy. You must sincerely desire to be happy. There are people who have been depressed, dejected, and unhappy so long that was they suddenly made happy by some wonderful, good, joyous news, they would actually be like the woman who said to me, it is wrong to be so happy. They have been so accustomed to the old mental patterns that they do not feel at home being happy. They long for the former, depressed unhappy state. I knew a woman in England who had rheumatism for many years. She would pat herself on the knee and say, my rheumatism is bad today. I cannot go out. 
My rheumatism keeps me miserable. This dear elderly lady got a lot of attention from her son, daughter, and the neighbors. She really wanted her rheumatism. She enjoyed her misery as she called it. This woman did not really want to be happy. I suggested a curative procedure to her. I wrote down some biblical verses and told her that if she gave attention to these truths, her mental attitude would undoubtedly change and would result in her faith and confidence in being restored to health. She was not interested. There seems to be a peculiar, mental, morbid streak in many people, whereby they seem to enjoy being miserable and sad. Why choose unhappiness? Many people choose unhappiness by entertaining these ideas. Today is a black day, everything is going to go wrong. 160. Could I am not going to succeed. Everyone is against me. Business is bad, and it is going to get worse. I'm always late. I never get the breaks. He can, but I can't. If you have this attitude of mind the first thing in the morning, you will attract all these experiences to you, and you will be very unhappy. Begin to realize that the world you live in is determined largely by what goes on in your mind. Marcus Aurelius, the great Roman philosopher and sage, said, A man's life is what his thoughts make of it. Emerson, America's foremost philosopher, said, A man is what he thinks all day long. The thoughts you habitually entertain in your mind have the tendency to actualize themselves in physical conditions. Make certain you do not indulge in negative thoughts, defeatist thoughts, or unkind, depressing thoughts. Recall frequently to your mind that you can experience nothing outside your own mentality.